The Psalms, they are all prayers and they are all connections. The angels are going up. On the other side, uh, the angels are coming down. This is the uh, connection which Hashem is keeping. It is prophecy, it is enlightenment, and this is what the Almighty is giving to the human being. Welcome to the Museum of Psalms. The museum was opened by the Rav Getz, who was the Rav of the Kotel and all the holy places. And my confirmation comes from the Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson, who gave me a special blessing 19 years ago uh, to paint the Psalms. I did for him some major work in New York, between so many other things. A uh, six-story high wall in Manhattan and a three-story high wall in Miami, an Alton Road by Rav Korf. And and also a two-story high wall in Hollywood. And in the last 19 years, I painted for each son of painting. This is the first time in the history of art and somebody did this. No Christian, no Jew did it ever before. And also, this is the first and only museum in Israel which portrays modern religious paintings. Work just with the seven colors of the spectrum. Each and every color has a sense and nothing happened by an accident. So Tehillet, which is blue, is mercy. The white is loving kindness. The purple is wisdom. The green is beauty. These are the colors of the Zohar. Pardes Rimonim, the orchard of pomegranate. Orchard of pomegranate is a part of the Zohar. It was written by Rav Cordovero 500 years ago and uh, recorrected uh, by uh, the Gra 250 years ago, so to speak, modernized. And it is a system how I am working. So each color has a sense. And this Psalm 127.1, here uh, the king is talking about if the Almighty does watch the city, respectively with Jerusalem, and the watchman watching it in vain. So uh, the city, is in the middle of a yud, surrounding all the other yuds, and the color are hesed, loving kindness for the white, and rahamim, mercy for the turquoise, and then hochma, wisdom for violet. It is a very important piece. This Psalm 103, verse 22, bless my soul, the Almighty. So the question is, do you have a soul? And if you have a soul, who gave it to you? So he is the one who gave it to you, the Yud, and he is blowing it in your nostrils, in your personal nostrils, and keep it in living body, which is high, that means life, because life is the greatest gift what you can get from the Almighty, life himself. And the head is the head of the Kabbalist, what is Gematria 6, Zion is Gematria 7, together is 13, which is Echad, that means one with the Almighty, and also Achava, love, is also 13, together is 26, because a soul without love is a defective soul, something is missing in that soul. So here is a statement which says, and then the soul is on fire. So why is it so important that the soul should be on fire? Because the soul himself would like to go up to the Almighty and reach him while uh, the body is keeping him down. And uh, as we saw in the colors, in the middle uh, there is white, which is hesed, which is loving kindness, and, uh, and turquoise is rahamin, which is mercy, and surrounded by Orange, and orange is the color of Hod, which it means majesty. And then the soul again tried to reach up and go back from the source. The soul, if connected, respectively not cut off karet, he will be eternal and he will uh, go back to the Almighty from whom he came because our soul with the Almighty is one with the Almighty and is the whole idea. And this preservation can be done just by keeping the commandments, which are for the uh, Noahites, the seven commandments, and for the Jews, 
the 613, but because we don't have a temple uh, anymore, so uh, there are about 50 commandments which are left. And as long as we are keeping these commandments and we are connecting to our Almighty, our soul is preserved and is eternal. And this is the most important, what everybody has to understand. And this is what we are trying here in the museum. This is Psalm 118. Mm -hmm. Here the king is talking about gates. Obviously, he is talking about the uh, gates of upstairs and not the common gates. In this painting, there are 50 gates. The soul has to pass these 50 gates to come close to the one Almighty who gave the soul to rest under his holy throne. The soul is coming from very far them and passes through all these gates, which gates are in a form of a heart, if you see it well. And above there are the Yudim, which are the angels, which are each one controlling a gate. And uh, the first 40 gates are, so to speak, relatively easy, but the last gates are very complicated. And the very last gate, which is here, what you see in uh, the last opening is the most difficult and not everybody is uh, what to go through but this angel's decisions. Here the colors are white which is loving kindness, turquoise which is mercy and then upstairs there is an orange which is majesty and the Almighty is watching about and it is in a form of a heart where the soul is passing through all the gates. Welcome to the Sun series, The Sun is a Healer. It is mentioned in four places in the Torah, in the Bible, in the writings, in the Oral Torah, and in the Nevi'im, which are the prophets. The Sun is a Healer is a very powerful concept, and it is uh, based on the Anabakuach, which is a prayer, which certain Jews say it one time a day and others sometimes several times a day. It is the 42 hidden names and the 42 words which are in this Pasuk, which was written by Kahana Van Kahuna. He was a high priest in the second temple. These are seven times six words. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven times the 42 letters. And uh, on these names, I did a series of sons which are able to heal. Some people are sometimes sick. Some people are uh, very often sick. Some people are sick their whole life. And uh, the son being a healer is a holistic way to heal the person and instead just as the doctors just heal the body is also very good but this holistic healing is a different way where it first heals the soul which are able to heal the mind and the mind ultimately is able to heal the body when the souls are healed then a joy can be released and joy is what is the most important in the life of a person and uh, it is the absolute connection with the Almighty who gives uh, the soul a eternity and uh, keep him uh, alive. There was a tzaddik, a teacher, who had students. One day he asked one of his students, what are you doing in life? The student answered him, I'm a baker, I buy flour and I mix it with water and with all the ingredients, I bake it, I sell it, I buy new flowers and that's what I'm doing. The teacher asked again, what are you doing in your life? And he repeated several times. The teacher asked him, uh, listen, I didn't ask then with what you spend your life. I want to know then what is the sense of your life, mm -hmm. what are your dreams. And um, this is what is important, not what, how you spend your time. Mm -hmm. Because the dreams, they are touching the person to the Almighty. Because the body's dream is the bread and the soul's bread is the dream.